Our guest today is Joe Staley. Well, thanks, Crystal. A digital visionary artist. That's right. We're happy to have you here today, Joe. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I'm excited about seeing your new work and hearing you talk about how your older work evolved from your background in science, logic, mathematics, design of wind turbines into the visionary art that you're creating today. That's true, it all comes together. Shall I show you a piece? Oh, I'd love to see some. Let's take one out and we'll show it to the camera and show it to you. Wow. So this is part of a sequence of pictures, digital pictures I've been working on called Night Flight. If you imagine yourself flying above the earth somewhere. It's just your spirit. You don't need an airplane because your spirit's flying. So this is what your spirit airplane might look like. Wow. You're in the cabin and apparently moonlight and the earth beneath and there are several dimensions, more than, more than usual. I can see deep within there, Joel. There are a lot of, the, the closer I look, the more I see. Well, uh, good, because that, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to reach there. Especially when I focus right on the center, it seems like I'm swirling into the painting. These are produced using a lot of optics. This is my, my experience in physics and mathematics. This goes into this. And it's, they're interesting to, to design, to make these forms, because you're on the edge of control and not control when you do this kind of work, or when I do this kind of work. Um, I have to use my sense of, of optics, the sense of design, but I can't quite control it. I can, I can partially control what happens and partially not. So I have to play back and forth between letting things happen that I don't expect and then trying to get them to where I like them. When so, you're creating these, you're not actually seeing everything you're creating. You're creating it uh, from an abstract perspective and then it takes quite a while for the computer to render the final product. That's right, and then I go back to the abstract perspective using that information and change it and then re-render it and then uh, I do that perhaps a dozen times. And it takes what, 24 or more hours to render. The original sense of it was flying at night over the earth, parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. So I attempted to name them after provinces and states, oh. locations on the earth. So when you're creating, you're imagining that you're over one of those places. That's right. Even places I've been, places that I've only, you know, imagined being. Like in a dream. Perhaps. Or in a dream. science fiction novel. Or just imagination, yeah. In your imagination. And am I correct to call these paintings? Not really. They're prints. Prints. They're prints. They're, they're uh, high resolution Jaclay prints. Mm -hmm. And they're, they'll be produced in limited editions. and be collector's items. And I've done several dozen of these. Uh, that's one reason I like to name them after locations, because there are plenty of locations to well, name them after. Are. So this is, is Veneto. This, this is imagine flying over Venice and the landscapes around Venice. Wow. There's one where the spaces are... See, there's, there's a combination of distinct space and indistinct space that, that goes, the layer. So things like this are very clear and sharp and that. And then back down in here, you can just sort of wander in down there. for the imagination. I think they'll be useful for people to have, to live with. As well, a meditation tool? Yes. And um, not necessarily even a conscious meditation tool, although that's feasible, but to live with it, to be with it. I think it will uh, increase people's spatial perception. Make them aware of more things in space around them. Absolutely. It's just sitting here looking. I feel in there and a sense of 
world's opening. The deeper I look into the painting, the, the further I see. I haven't spent a lot of time looking through a telescope, but perhaps a little bit like that. Well, there is that when you look through a telescope. You, the longer you look, the more you see. Or through a microscope, perhaps. The same thing, yes. These actually look more like microscopic images to me mm -hmm. than telescopic. And I wonder how much of this comes from recent work I did at the university when I was developing uh, materials, for example, on nanoscience to teach nanoscience to students. Nanoscience. Nanoscience, nanoscience. the science of, of things that are a billionth of a meter across. Oh my. Which is a major area of development technology today. So this would be a com like a computer chip technology? Or a this is beyond chip? computer chip technology now. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a combination of, of biology, computers, and uh, chemistry and physics. Mm -hmm. this, this painting print has an element of robotics to me. It does, and, and part of that is that there is a there's a, dual, a dualism, there's a, a communication between me and the computer and the software going back and forth, and the physics that's built into my mind and, and training and into the software, because the software can generate optics, optical events, but I have to know what optical events I want. I can't just tell the computer to do it. It's you more subtle parameters? than that. Yes, but they're indefinite parameters. They're they're flexible. The mathematical parameters? Mm, sometimes, yes. And then the computer generates an image based on your yeah. directions? Yes. But not necessarily the image I'm expecting. Oh, that's, a that's why I have to go back back and forth in a conversation with the computer and with the the imagination and with Something else is in there too, and I don't know what it is. It's like there's a there's a reality here that's trying to project itself. That's neither me nor, nor the computer, or so it seems to me. Interesting. Uh, sometimes I've wondered if I'm not doing portraits of some four-dimensional being. Interesting. So it's a synergistic effect between yourself and the computer that's creating another being. Yes. Coming through. Either creating or maybe just photographing, finding another being. Finding it, seeing another reality. And I'm not sure what's going on there. Very and uh, it's not like anything I've ever seen, but it somehow seems familiar. Let's see another one. I hear you have so much color. Yes, that's right. Let's do that. Let's try one here. This has some red in it. Wow. So at first I was just working in black and white, and then I decided it would be more fun to put some color in some of them. Yeah. So this is an example of that. Red um, and green. I see a being here. I see a, a figure. That shows up quite a bit in, in these things. Not always. In some, some ways it, the figure is very clear, other times it's indefinite. Are some really. of them combinations of pre-existing images or are they all newly created? Images? No, they're all newly created. Wow. I've done collage work before and in, in, in different styles in the past, but these are, these are all, every one of these is, is just, starts off with just the blank in imagination.